Hey, what's up my YouTube fam? I'm back. This is Larry with Invest and Build Your Credit and Wealth. And we're going to do something a little different. We're going to just talk about stock education, really. A lot of times people really don't talk about kind of educating people. So many people want to learn how to invest their money and grow their wealth in the stock market, but they're just not educated. So they just shy away from it, not understanding that they're really a leaving money on the table. Uh, you know, I, as I opened up my credit repair business uh, and really started helping people build and understand credit and how to leverage their credit and grow their wealth, uh, I really learned, man, about money. And then it really started getting me to understand about how do I really make my money grow? Beside opening a business, beside uh, what are the other areas where I can add uh, to to continue to grow my, uh, you know, grow my wealth, grow my investments, all that. And then I was like, I need to get into the stock market. And the more I researched, the more I looked into it, the more I understand uh, that this is what I need to add you know, to my portfolio when I talk about in the in the main scope of just growing my wealth, not just opening a business, uh, but there's other things that I want to add, you know, so 2021 is going to be a big year to continue to grow and I'm going to be starting to get in the real estate. So now to continue to grow, you know, the main thing is you really want to try to become set your, at least set yourself up for retirement if you really want to grow to be financially free, you know, not to be able to uh, have to worry about, uh, you know, can I retire? When can I retire? You know, do I have the money to retire? Am I going to have to downsize? Am I going to have to get rid of stuff just to make uh, make it affordable for me to live? Am I have to change my lifestyle of living? You know, so you should be planning for your young people out there. Now is the time to get started. You will set yourself up uh, to be a millionaire. I mean, it's just that simple. If you're investing your money and you're making the right moves, you can become a millionaire. I mean, we're producing more millionaires every year. Uh, so we have to understand uh, that it's all about investing our money, putting our money in the right locations and really growing our wealth. By right, open a business, buy real estate, get into the stock market, you know. So uh, I have become a true believer. Uh, again, I started my account the first week of May and I started with a hundred dollars. That's what I started with. I think uh, actually I deposited 50 and then I deposited something else. So it's like, uh, but matter of fact, I will show you up there the, when I started. I think it was the first week of May with $100. And then I just started investing and buying stocks. And as of the day, I'm up to $13,200. Did take a cup, you know, I took a big hit. You know, the stock market is really, uh, November was a one of the best months. I think they reported since like 1940 something. And, you know, usually when you have a great month, you're going to have some pullbacks. People are going to take profits. Uh, you know, the stock market is going to rebalance. So I lost a little bit about $800, but I am still up about 49% on my investment. Exactly 49.73%. So even in those months that you have bad and pullback, uh, you could still be up massively on your investments. So we're going to just talk about that. We're going to talk about stocks. We're going to kind of go over just some general stuff that you need to understand about the stock market so you can get into it and grow your wealth. So, uh, but that's certainly, I have to give my disclaimer first. I'm not a financial advisor. All this is just information and it's my opinion. Uh, you have to do your due diligence uh, to go out and understand what your risk tolerance is, what can you invest, uh, and and educate yourself on the stock market uh, and what you can possibly do to grow your wealth. And we're going to cover a lot of different things that you can do, things that I do to to look at a stock to see if it's something that I want to invest in. So, but I know a lot of people 
you know, some people just talk about certain metrics, but they really don't educate. And so many people want to be somewhat educated or they want to find a little platform to really kind of push them out so they can start investing. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to get y'all going because, man, I'm telling you, uh, I'm on pace. I believe I'm on pace uh, right now to to hit when I hit my year mark to have anywhere from twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars in in my portfolio in one year. We're talking about that in one year. And you got to understand compound interest, being able to invest your money properly and continue to move, uh, leverage your credit and all that other stuff is going to continue. So, you know, my five year plan uh, is to have anywhere from three hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars invested in my portfolio. Uh, that and, and it's aggressive. I'm going to be definitely very aggressive. Uh, we're trying to uh, really push money into the market. Uh, a lot of it is hitting the winners, hitting the winners. I have some stock I'm up over 200 percent on. I have quite a few I'm up over 100 uh, percent on. And I have some I'm up maybe 30 percent, 40 percent, 15 percent. But it's also hitting those key winners. And we're going to talk about that a little bit, too. So the first thing we want to talk about is we want to look at and I, if you see me look off, I have my notes here because I want to make sure I don't miss anything uh, when I'm giving you out this information. But the first thing I think you need to understand is all the sectors that cover in the portfolio, right in the stock market, I mean to say, uh, because it's really important that you understand that, because, first of all, you don't want to be over leveraged in one sector. Because when that one sector goes bad, your whole portfolio is bad. And typically, some sectors may dip. For example, in in doing this COVID, you know, uh, the hotel industry. So if you talk in the hood, you can talk about uh, consumer staples or consumer discretionary uh, utilities, uh, you know, uh, Rental stocks, uh, real estate stocks kind of took a dip, really. Uh, you had the CARES Act. People didn't have to pay mortgage, even though the mortgages still had to be paid. The servicers still had to pay the mortgage. People were going into forbearance. Uh, you had uh, uh, malls and shopping centers that, you know, because people weren't able to come in or just the, the volume of people shopping went down. Uh, people were just having a hard time. So certain stocks just start tanking during uh COVID, right? But your the caveat in that is you have to understand sometimes when good companies dip in a bad market, it's a great buying opportunity because eventually when the market reverses, you have more gains that you can possibly get out of the stock because when the market changes, those stocks are gonna start to increase. So I've invested in stocks in real estate uh, 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 stocks in the hotel industry, stuff like that, is just because I know eventually they are going to turn around. If you notice in the airline industry, there was stocks like American Airlines was down to seven seven dollars at some point. Now you see it's on an uptick. It's back up to what fourteen fifteen dollars a share. So if you bought it at seven, you've already doubled your money. So a lot of people buy into that when those stocks are struggling. Knowing that they're not going anywhere, these companies are not going to fall off. The government, in most cases, some are not going to because it's going to overall hurt the, the American economy. You have to understand certain stocks would definitely hurt. Another company, Boeing. Boeing was down to under two hundred dollars. It was at if you go look at a at its highs, it's been up to four hundred dollars. If you look at Boeing now, it's now it's up over two hundred and something dollars. So if you just pay attention, the market dip, the market struggle. Now with Boeing, you know that FTC has uh, approved them for those planes. Now you see their price, their stock is starting to rise back up. Now if you had bought it at their all time lows, you've already doubled your money. So if you spent $10,000 and you just went in and said, you know what? Because Boeing was not going anywhere. It's only two uh, airplane industry that make airplanes and Boeing is one of them and they're not going anywhere. 
right? The government is not going to allow it because they, they help them with the defenses and all other areas of defense. So was Bourne going anywhere? No, Bourne wasn't going anywhere. So a lot of people invested at the lows. And if they invested $10,000, they've already, they've already doubled their money. So back to that, even though uh, stocks may go down, if you have, if you're uh, looking at a great company and they, if they can weather the storm to get through and there's something that is typically a good fundamental company, uh, you're going to, you're going to, when the stock market changes, you know, you could reap the benefits uh, on that investment, which could be massive. So, you know, so just, you know, just on the caveat of that, but then back to the portfolio, other stocks would just be ruined. So now if you understand a lot of things are going on with the EVs, uh, you know, a lot of EV companies are coming out. A lot of SPACs have came out this year. I think it's an all time high for SPACs coming out in 2020. A lot of companies uh, taking the quick way to go ahead and gain uh, to gain money, uh, to go ahead and continue, you know, investing in their company and growing their company. Uh, so, uh, there's a lot of companies that grow, you know, you had Neo. I mean, even I, I bought Neo at $5 and 88 cents. It was up to about $55. Uh, now it's in kind of took a down tip to $43. Uh, but that's a buying opportunity for me. So, uh, I'm going to be making a massive investment in the next week or so. Uh, I'm just kind of playing out where I want to put my money but I'm going to be probably dropping, you know, a few thousand dollars, you know, in the stock market just to uh, uh, some great things. I have an IPO that we're going to talk about later on in the video. So hang tight on one that you're definitely going to want to hear about. I'm definitely going to be putting a nice little chunk in there because I want to hit it when it first hits. And I think it hits on um, December the 11th. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. But uh, definitely want to be into, uh, definitely want to hit this stock and add this stock to my portfolio. But again, we're going to, I'm going to break down. There are actually 11 sectors, uh, in, uh, the stock market. I added 12 because now you have these stocks coming out and IPOs or SPACs. So I added to make it 12, but legitimately is only 12 sectors. And we're going to talk about those 12 sectors. I'm going to kind of keep my notes in my phone. I kind of want to read, you know, what the sectors all are so people can really understand them. You know, so the first one we're going to talk about is financials. Uh, so what is financial sector? It's banks, investment funds, insurance companies, real estate firms, and other amounts to others uh, in general. And the majority of the revenues generated by these sectors come from mortgages, loans, they gain value as interest rates rise, right? So as another thing, interest rates are low now, right? So my next investment is going to be in JP Morgan in the bank, largest bank here in the United States. Why am I going to invest in? Because I, I'm telling people, even the people I deal with uh, in my, uh, you know, my uh, credit repair business, that, hey, you should be getting your credit together so you can purchase a home, right? Interest rates are at all time lows. When this market changes and when people go back to work and people, uh, the unemployment rate starts declining again and the Fed realizes because once people go back to work, then people are going to have more money, expenditures is going to go up. Travel is going to go up. You figure by going into next summer, so many people have been locked down. A lot of industries are going to go up. Travel, airline travel is going to go up. Hotels are going to go up. Places like Disney uh, are going to go up. There's going to be stocks that's going to uptick. People are going to want to get out. I'm going to want to get out. I've been having traveled, haven't really went anywhere, haven't really done nothing. Don't go out to eat. Don't Man, you... It's going to be a change and so many people are going to have that attitude. So I promise you, those those are going to change. So why am I going to invest in JP Morgan? Because eventually it's the feds are going to need to slow down. They're going to want to slow down, you know, our economy, because 
We don't want to be going inflation because overspending. So what do you do? How do you slow down the economy? You raise the interest rates. Once you start raising interest rates, what happens? That's more money that the banks makes on loans that they're going to be giving out. So, <clears throat> so that's one of the reasons that's going to be an investment that I want to pull in. Plus, JP Morgan has a dividend, which we're going to talk more about that too. So JP Morgan is not going anywhere. It's a part of the S&P 500. It is not going anywhere. So uh, we definitely want, I'm definitely going to be investing in that. And I'm going to have a class on a lot of different investments you need to be getting into, right? The next one is utilities. That is another sector. That sector consists of electric, gas, and water companies, as well as integrated providers. So that's the next section. The next one is consumer discretionaries. The consumer discretionary sectors consist of retail, media companies, consumer service providers, apparel companies like clothes, uh, consumer uh, durables in general. Uh, these companies benefit from the um, improving economics when consumer spending accelerates. <clears throat> so again, people are gonna be getting out. People have been locked up. So some of these stocks, consumer discretionary stocks, you're gonna see increase. So right now, a lot of them are taking a hit because of COVID, you know? So look into that. It's a great, you may want to look in those companies, good companies, solid companies, fundamentals, what we'll be talking about in a little bit later, a company that you may want to invest in. Another one is consumer staples. Consumer staples sector consists of food, beverage companies, as well as companies that create products consumers are unwilling to cut from their budget, right? So that's a good thing. So you definitely want to understand consumer staples, stuff that people don't want to buy, like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola stock hasn't tipped because they got some people out here like to drink Coca-Cola and they ain't going to stop buying Coca-Cola. They're going to keep it in that grocery cart and they're going to keep doing it along with other things. Pepsi, another one. Pepsi has another, all kind of chips, sodas, all that. I mean, did they stock really dip? No, because people continually buy that. So just uh, just kind of FYI, uh, the next sector is energy. Energy. Energy sector consists of oil and gas uh, exploration and the production company. Now, oil and gas did take a dip. Reason why? Because people are not traveling. You know, the airline industry had really took a hit. So a lot of in that area, so because it's an overabundance of oil because things decrease, now that market is. But now if you're paying attention, it's starting an uptick. You know, some great companies to really invest in. Chevron is one that I always hear. Even Exxon is starting to move back up, but I'm a big component of Chevron. The next one is healthcare. So healthcare, and you know healthcare has been going because of the coronavirus. Uh, different uh, companies coming out, you know, like Pfizer and Moderna, a lot of companies coming out with this vaccine. Uh, so the healthcare has been up, right? Doing really well. The next one is industrial. So industrial sector consists of aerospace, defense, uh, machinery, construction, fabrication, manufacturing companies. So those companies, if you look at, uh, I mean, one of the amazing thing is the housing industry has still been booming. I live in a new sector. Uh, when I first bought my house, there was only four houses on the street. Now it's probably, and I moved in this house a year ago, uh, and this now there is a total of probably about 40, 40 houses in my sector alone that have been built in that year's time. Like popping them up and and as soon as they get up, I see a U-Haul moving, people moving in. So, uh, but that's a great thing. Another thing with uh, industrial, a lot of these companies have great ETFs. And we're going to talk about ETFs too. Technology. Now that has been holding up the stock market for 2020. Technology, EV companies, semiconductors, the cloud, which we're going to talk about too, when I talk about different companies to invest in, 
the cloud space uh, companies. Uh, so they have really been holding up the stock market. And with we're in a revolution when it comes to technology. When you're talking about electric cars, you're talking about electric charging stations, companies that are going to be providing the charging stations for electric cars. We're talking about semiconductors for faster processing speed. We're talking about 5G. We're talking about a lot of different chip now uh, that's going to be uh, helping a lot of these different technology companies. So you definitely want to be, and we'll talk about some of those companies. Telecom. Uh, so, and let me go back because I didn't say technology sector consists of electronics, manufacturing, software development, and information technology firms. Uh, telecom, uh, the telecom sector consists of wireless provider, cable companies, internet service providers, and satellite companies, among others. So, great company, 5G. You know, you got Apple coming out with the 5G phone, which I've already ordered uh uh because you know 5g is going to be big uh and when it starts getting implemented it's going to be big you know so you know position yourself materials a uh, material sector consists of mining uh uh refining chemicals uh and other related companies so hey another company will like so i i'm invested in a mining bit uh, coin company. You know, I'm investing in a rare earth mineral mining company, which are doing well, which I'll talk about in the next class when we talk about stocks to invest in. So stay tuned, hit the next class that comes up. I'm gonna be posting a couple classes today. Today is, uh, uh, what is it? December the 5th, I think. Uh, December, yeah, the 4th, 5th, no, December the 6th. Let me get it right. Uh, December the 6th. Uh, so I'm posting this video and we're definitely going to be hitting you back with a stocks to invest in video today. Uh, real estate. We talked about real estate. Uh, you definitely want to those are your 11 and 12 IPOs with a SPAC. So IPOs are companies that are merging with a SPAC company to bring them on uh, and then they're going through the merger and then they will come out with their own uh, ticker symbol. And it's a way for them to come to the market to gain money, basically to gain money to help them invest and grow, uh, you know, for the, us retail investors to, to invest in these companies, to, to really invest in them so they can continue to grow uh, their company and really build out. Uh, you know, for the consumer and uh, institutional investor to invest in their company to grow, right? So those are the sectors. So when you're building out your portfolio, make sure you're attacking or you're building out a complete portfolio. You know, the word, of, you know, the, the they tell you to, you know, either have, if you're only going to have four sectors, then you they should be 25% each. If you're going to have you know, 10 sectors, you know, try to do each one 10% each, right? So, but that's your own, uh, you know, your own opinion on how you want to build out your portfolio. You have to do that, do your own research again and do, that's just my opinion. Uh, so you just definitely want to build it out. So, you know, if you, if, if one sector is not doing well, then you can go, you know, you have other sectors that do it well to just kind of offset the losses, you know, that you may have within your portfolio, you know, so dividends, dividend stocks, really important. You have growth stocks that give out dividends. Why do you want to invest in stocks with dividends? Because now you're creating another streamline of income, right? You have stocks that's out there that pay out dividend yields. Uh, they may pay out so much. You have some people that like AT&T, uh, or Realty, you know, some other companies that pay out Exxon, some people like certain dividends that pay out. But mind you, when you're investing in companies with dividends, you have to understand, is it a safe dividends to invest in? The worst thing you want to do is invest in a stock that's not really a growth stock, uh, but they have a very good dividends. And next thing you know, they cut their dividends. Now you really have lost because you're in a stock that's not a growth stock, not really growing, uh, they're trading sideways or dipping down and then, but you're not even getting the dividends for them. So 
be careful. Look for strong companies that have a good, safe dividend scores. That's what you want to look for when you're investing in dividend stock. What is their dividend safe score? And we'll talk about something that I use uh, to really get into that to make sure I'm investing in good. Don't just invest into a dividend company because they have this high 19% yield or 15% yield dividends. They may be doing that to keep the investor involved in investing solely for dividends, but they may be having a poor finance. Their financials could be very poor. And at some point, because of that, they could just cut their dividends. And next thing you know, you have a stock that's not making any money with a poor, they would have cut dividends. And now you're going to have to think about, do I need to get out uh, of this stock? Right? So when I talk, when I do, it's two things I use. I use an app called Dividends. And then I have another uh, 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 company I use called Safely, Safely Safe Dividends .com. It is kind of expensive. I think it's about three hundred and ninety nine dollars a year, but they will break down every dividend uh, company and give you a safe dividend scores on why how they evaluate it and is this a good company to dividends they'll give you you know safe very safe uh marginal poor you know they'll give you the risk factors uh for your dividends uh so they'll have like a dividend safety score of 80 uh they'll tell you about what the dividend yield is they'll tell you their last four or five times they have invested in the company. So example, I'm going to look up AT&T for you. AT&T, which is T. So right now, AT&T, for an example, has a, a dividend yield of 7.04% with a safe dividend score of 65. They also, in the app, it'll tell you how what is their dividend growth. The dividend growth is really slow. It says very slow, 2% last year. It's there, uh, it'll tell you what their uh, uh, stock price is at $29.54. It'll tell you, uh, you know, the last five or six times they evaluated the dividend. It'll tell you what the forward payout ratio is, which is 66%. It'll tell you, uh, the dividend growth it'll tell you a bunch of stuff i'm not even naming on and it just it's the last the last 20 years it's been four percent per year which they considered slow uh but they also tell you that it's been uninterrupted dividend streak of 36 years so at&t has been paying out dividends uninterrupted for 36 years uh, and their dividend growth streak is the same. They have increased it every year for 36 years. So, and they tell you what your annual payout per stock. So your annual payout per stock, if you bought one stock for the whole year, you would get $2.08 that year, right? And they pay out quarterly. So it tells you that they pay out February, May, August, and November of the, and then they tell you what their next X dividends date their next, the last ex dividends date was uh, October the eighth. They paid it out November the second. So, you know, I use that just because. And the nice thing about it is, as all the stocks I entered into my portfolio, it tells me how much annually that I. So right now, again, I just started investing in May of this year, and my annually payout on dividends is one hundred and nineteen dollars. So, but. Believe me, that's going to continue to grow because as I continue to grow my portfolio, that continues to grow and I'm going to get a quarterly payout. So as long as I can continue to do this until I retire, you know, I can easily have ten to $20,000 to $30,000 in dividends paid out to me every year. So just imagine you, 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 you got your retirement, you know, you got your 401, you got dividends paid out. You need to understand to have multiple lines of income coming in that will make your retirement life, you know, a joy, you know, really a joy, not stressing on how you're going to take care of, you know, important things in your life. So that's the one thing. And I talked about those are the one things I do. 
The other thing, as you start investing, you need to start looking at, you know, your portfolio management. Understand how to rebalance your portfolio. People don't talk about this enough. You need to be rebalancing your portfolio and understanding what I need. Is there something that I need to put in? Do I need to put a stop loss in on my stocks, you know, to make sure I'm not take a massive hit if that stock just dips one day? Some news come out on the stock. Uh, I'm not paying attention to the stock market. Next thing you know, I woke up, my stock was $55. And next thing you know, that I later on that day, I found out my stock dropped to $25 because some massive news came out about something, something illegal, uh, something that happened to the stock, or uh, you have uh, some of these people put some bad information or some information out about a stock where people start pulling out. So you want to put stop losses in on your stocks, right? to protect your investment. You don't want to take more than a 10% hit on your investment. You don't want to do that. So that's something you want to look at. And rebalancing. You've been rebalancing. You've had a stock. You see the fundamentals of that stock has changed. Uh, you see the news about that stock and you may want to get out of that stock. Rebalance that stock and find some other stock that you can put in its place to uh you know to continually grow out your portfolio so always look at rebalancing your portfolio right definitely want to do that uh the next thing let's just talk about some fundamentals you know so we we definitely want to get into some fundamentals of the stock market and why is it so important uh to understand the fundamentals and that's where most people you know i'm looking down but i need to pull something up well, most people, uh, you know, really get, uh, you know, scared about when they deal with the stock market is some of the just fundamentals of, of how do I know what stock to invest in? What should I be looking for? What are the things? And we're going to talk. These are the things that I look at when I'm everybody's a little different how they evaluate stocks. Some people are really deep, uh, you know, fundamentals like P.E. ratio. They just go on that. Right. Me, I, I do look at that, but there's so many other areas because just those fundamentals don't tell you the true story about the about the stock. There's a stock could have a really poor, be overrated based on what the PE ratios say, but the growth potential of the stock and it's just growing because people believe in the stock and the stock is just taking an uptick. Say, a prime example, Tesla. When I started investing in the stock market, Tesla was still overvalued. It was about 300 and I don't know, I think it was like $398 a share, you know, and I was an early investor and, and I learned a lot too. Didn't invest in the company. The next thing you know, the stock kept going up 400, 500, 600, 700, 900, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, 1,800, 24, I mean, 20, all the way up to 2,200. Right. So but everybody was screaming, Tesla's overvalued, Tesla's overvalued. But they're screaming Tesla's overvalued, but the stock price continued to roll. So it made people a lot of money. So a lot of people probably sold out of Tesla and took profits. Right. And then Tesla did a uh, what they do, a four to one or five to one stock split. Uh, which bring it back to where it's at now. And now that it's been added in the S&P 500, which I did uh, a video on that, that now you see it creeping back up. My belief Tesla in probably the next 12 months will be back up to either 650 to $700 a share, right? Because it's just their, their business model. They're so far ahead of everybody else. They have the market. They have the, they have the majority of the market here in the U S they just open up, a, uh, they're building a plant in Austin, Texas. They're building a plant in Germany. They're building a plant or they have a plant, building a plant in China, excuse me. So they are all over the world and they're hitting the market. So, uh, and they have the majority of the market here in the United States. I'm in California and you can't go nowhere without seeing a Tesla here. You come to California, you're going to see Teslas all over the place. So, and here in the state of California, the governor signed a bill that in 2035, they will not be selling any more ICE cars, which are cars that take gasoline in them. So, you know, tax credit buying a, a, an EV car. There's a lot of things. I've driven one, very impressed. I drove a Tesla, I drove the, the Model 3. Acceleration is crazy. Like it puts you in your seat. 
uh, take your foot off the gas, it brakes. You know, you don't initially even have to hit the brake. Uh, rides really well. Uh, it's kind of strange. You don't get the gear shift change. It's a steady flow. Uh, but those cars, uh, electric cars are the cars of the future. And if you're not vested in those type of stocks, you're behind the power curve because those stocks are going to be, be rise because we are at the infancy of electric cars. So the saturation, we have a long way to go to be, to be able to saturate. We, it's going to be 10, 15 years uh, of producing EV cars. And we still, they are only estimating, we still may only have 30 or uh, 40% saturation of EV cars, uh, even 10 to 15 years from now. So great investment you wanted to be looking in. I'm investing in a few companies. I'll talk about those companies in uh, the next class that we give, uh, but uh, next video I do. So, we're, but yeah, EVs is where you want to be looking at. Uh, the next thing, uh, uh, when the fundamentals, you always want to look at what is the market cap of the company? I always look at what, well, how much is this company worth? I look at that. The next thing I look at is the EPS, which is called earnings per share. How much earnings are they making per share in this company? And what their estimated growth is on that company. So that's the main thing that I look at too when I look at earnings per share. And then I look at what it's so say the first quarter that earnings per share was, you know, 15 cents per share. In the second quarter, it was 23% per share. That's a growth in earnings and sales. Then say the third quarter, they went up to 44 cents. Now I'm seeing, okay, this company is growing and each quarter there are, there, their sales and, and revenues are increasing based on their earnings per share. I need to be investing in this company. So, uh, so I definitely look at the earnings per share uh, and what their estimated earnings per share are uh, based on what their past history is and what their growth potential is and some of the other fundamental factors of the company. The next thing I look at is uh, the growth, the year over year revenue, uh, which is uh, the CAGR, which is the compound annual growth in revenues. So uh, let me kind of just read that to you. All it is is the compound annual growth of uh, the annuals over the last three years. So I like to look at that. History says a lot about the future, right? So I definitely look at that. Next thing I look at is the leverage FCF, which is the free cash flow. So I want to read this over to you. So the, the leverage free cash flow is the amount of cash a business has after it has met its financial obligations like operating expenses and interest payments. So I look at that when I'm looking at a stock. Very important for me when I'm looking at uh, when I'm looking at my uh, uh, when I'm looking at a stock and looking is this a stock I want to invest in or continue to invest in. The next one is EBIT margins. Uh, let me read that to you. It says also known as the operating income margin, the operating profit margin, the EB the EBIT margins and returns on sale. It is the ratio of operating expense, operating income to net sales. So again, it's the ratio of operating income to net sales. So definitely something you want to look at when I look at that, when I'm looking at a company I want to invest in. So definitely something that is important uh, that that is important. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, profitability. So the next thing I look at is the gross margins for the trailing 12 months. What is that? The gross margin is calculated by subtracting the cost of goods sold from the total revenue divided, uh, dividing that's uh, the result by the total revenue, right? Again, the gross profit margin is calculated by subtracting the cost of goods sold from the total revenue and dividing that result by the total revenue, right? That's one that I look at. Uh, I also look at 
the momentum of the stock versus the S&P. And I use the S&P as a, bench, a benchmark. So um, how does that stock move? So let me give you an example. Apple in the, the uh, first three months of this year, uh, they were up only 1.07%, right? That was their momentum growth. But the S&P 500 was plus 7.94, right? But then we looked in six months in, Apple went on a tear. They went up their, their next six months, they were up 51.71% momentum growth when the S&P did increase, but only increased up to 18.85%. And then nine months out, again, Apple was still on a tear. So I'm looking at the momentum. Apple was up 61.52%, where the S&P 500 kind of just was steady with 18.18%. And then year over year, year over year, uh, momentum for Apple is up 86.83%. Where the S and P is still steady, back at still at eighteen point eighty four percent. So that's another area I look at when I'm looking. What is the momentum of the stock? How is the stock moving? The next thing I look at is the fifty two week high and the fifty two week low. Am I buying a stock at its all time highs? You don't want to buy stock at their all time highs. If they're if they're trading at fifty five dollars. And that's an all-time high. You don't want to buy stocks at their all-time highs. You want to buy stocks when they're at their all-time lows, or you see a dip. And we're going to talk about that, right? When do you? When are the indicators? Because people are going, well, how do you know when to buy? How do you know when the sell? So the things you want to look at is, uh, and I'm gonna post up a video for y'all to kind of cover this for y'all. Uh, you know, we want to talk about your stock charts. That's how you're going to be looking at. So, uh, and there's something called resistance and support lines. And now, pay attention. A stock's price rarely moves in a linear path. Instead, it fluctuates up and down over time. However, when it repeatedly reaches a certain value, then reverses direction, it creates price levels called support and resistance. These levels are just one tool in technical analysis that you can use to become a more skilled trader. In this video, we'll discuss what support and resistance levels are, what causes these levels to occur, and how they can help identify buy and sell signals. Simply put, support and resistance are price levels that act as boundaries that a stock has bounced off more than once. Support is the level a stock tends to stay above. Think of it as the floor supporting the price and resistance is the level a stock hits and comes back from. Resistance levels act as the ceiling for prices. Support and resistance levels are confirmed when a stock's price bounces off a certain value more than once. The more times this happens, the stronger the level is. You might wonder what causes support and resistance to occur. There are several reasons. When a stock price falls back to a previous low, investors might be more interested in buying. They're looking for a good price in hopes of buying low and selling high. Likewise, when a stock's price approaches a previous high, investors might be more interested in selling and taking their profits. Another reason support and resistance levels exist is that money managers often have common price targets. This means it's common for a lot of stocks to be bought at a certain price and sold at another predetermined price. Now that we know what causes support and resistance, Let's learn how these levels can possibly help you make decisions when trading. When the price hits a support or resistance level and then reverses direction, it's called a bounce. Therefore, when technicians see the price of a stock nearing support levels, it might be time for them to buy. The more solid the support level is, the more confidence technicians might have it could bounce back up. On the other hand, if the price reaches resistance levels, some technicians may think it might be time to sell. However, support and resistance levels aren't hard stops for prices. When a stock moves beyond previous limits, it's called a breakout. If an upward trending stock breaks resistance, the old resistance level often becomes the new support level. After a breakout, technicians may see this as a good place to buy, believing the stock will rally and climb. Depending on investors, and if they're bearish or bullish, 
support and resistance levels can be used in different ways. An investor looking to build a position might watch support levels for buy signals, hoping the stock will rally and break through resistance. An investor looking to close a position might watch resistance levels for sell signals or, in some cases, for an opportunity to buy a short position hoping to profit from the stock's decline. How you use support and resistance levels as buy and sell signals depends on the type of investor you are. For example, very active investors, like swing traders, use these levels to buy and sell often, possibly even in the same day. Less active trend traders can simply use breakouts to confirm a trend's direction. Support and resistance are basic concepts of technical analysis. Some investors are comfortable making trading decisions using only support and resistance, while others prefer coupling it with other technical analysis tools and techniques. Understanding support and resistance makes you better equipped to make sense of the market, no matter which way it's trending. Okay, we're back. So that's the other thing. You see that? So you see how the support line, you're going to run the line down the bottom. That is the support line. And then the resistance line is the line that goes to follow the stock. Is it is it resistance tipping up, right? So, so you know when that starts hitting up and sometimes when you see it just staying on that resistance line, you know, as us investors, we see there's going to be a breakout. And when you see that stock just break above that line that's what they call a breakout and that's when you see and you've already invested this is a stock you've already invested in and you see that you see oh man it's 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 been trading sideways on that resistance that stock is definitely going to break out fundamentals are good i don't know why but eventually it's going to break out and boom you see that stock just break out of that resistance and go up and that's where you make your gains but then you'll also see when that stick hits down at the support, when it hits that support, that's a buying opportunity. That's when you want to buy. Right? So another thing that I look at, I look at hedge funds. Who are the hedge funds? What stock are these hedge funds buying? These hedge fund managers, what are they buying? And why, how much are they buying of that stock? That's why I check out hedge funds. I go in, you can Google certain hedge funds, see what they're listing, you know, like Brookshire, you know, uh, uh, you know, Brookshire investment. You got ARK Invest. I look at those guys and see what are they investing in, you know. So, and then I look at their stock, see what they're investing in. I check out the stock, see what the momentum is of that stock. What is the, you know, all the fundamentals that are important to me and see if this is something that I want to be investing in. Why are they investing in it? They may be investing in for some kind of leverage or something. Or maybe they see something that we don't see as as uh, consumer investors. So, you know, so these institutional investors, they... I mean, you know, not saying they're doing some inside trading, but, you know, they may know a little something about a stock. So I check that out. I look at that. So maybe something you want to invest in. I mean, not invest in, but something you may want to investigate when you're looking at certain stocks is are institutional investors investing in this particular stock. The next thing, news drives the market, right? News drives the market. So pay attention to what's going on with your stock, with the stock market, right? It takes time. I'm gonna talk about certain things, informational sources I use on my phone. I get alerts, I mean, I'm always paying attention to it. You know, I get alert, you know, a buy alert, something on a particular stock and then I'm all over it. So uh, understand there are what drive news drives the market. Some bad news come out on the market, you're gonna see some people getting out of that stock because some people panic. You know, Warren Buffett says, you know, when that uh, when the consumer is when people have fear, you know, you know, I'm kind of quoting this. That's a buying opportunity, right? You know, right? But when people are overexcited, maybe a selling opportunity because now the stocks are going up, and that is so people fear they start selling the stock. The stock dips, you start buying. And so. You just got to understand, you know, information drives the market. Some of the information sources I use, CNBC. I like watching Mad Money. Uh, I think he's great. Uh, Seeking Alpha. I love that app. Yahoo Finance Bar Chart. 
I like to use, uh, I use an app called Dividends where I can always give me alerts on great dividend buys. Zach, I like to follow that. I use the app Market Watch. And then, hey, YouTube. I, I watch other YouTubers to see what their perspective is on a stock. So, uh, hey, listen, those are the things I use, some of the instruments I use when I'm trying to invest in the stock market and really uh, grow. I, I think as a as a new investor that's been investing for six months and really doing my research, I think I'm doing well. I know there's room for improvement, more things that I'm I'm still working on to gain more knowledge on. So next year, I'm, I'm going to be start doing more option trading because I've been learning about option trading and, and looking at signs and understand resistance and support lines and when a stock break out and what kind of stock, what the fundamentals are on the stock. So next year is a year that I'm going to be, that's where you can really make some good money on investing in different ways that you can invest. Other thing, buying warrants, buying warrants. You know, they have stocks and warrants. You can buy warrants that may be $2, leveraging warrants to make massive gains on warrants because when the stock price goes up, the warrants goes up. So understanding that too. So there's a lot of different strategies that you can make in massive amounts of money. So don't uh, understand uh, what's going on. I didn't say, so if you hung out to the end, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the bell for notifications, thumbs up. You know, it just drives. We want to get it out to a more broader audience. So please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment on something if you want to leave a comment. But I want to kind of do, a lot of people are not, Educate. They may talk about one thing, but they really don't talk about a lot of different things. But different people have different investment strategies. Uh, they look at things a little different. Uh, so, you know, with me, I mean, I'm 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 still a new investor, but I've learned a lot, and I wanted to bring this information over to y'all. Uh, I'm doing well. I've had gains up to seventy something percent. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube. I have an. Uh, uh, a group on YouTube called Investing to a Million Stock Group. Uh, well, I have investors on there that just we talk investment and we give key tips on investing tips and things like that. So please follow the channel. Uh, I am going to be putting out another video today and it's going to be hot because it's going to have about 12 stocks uh, that you should be investing in, why you should be investing in and all that type of stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to share my portfolio with y'all. I haven't shared it in a while, but I'm going to post it up again on the next class just so people can see what's going on uh, with me on my investing. And again, hey, I appreciate y'all hanging out. Appreciate y'all dealing with Larry on investing, build your credit and wealth. And I'll be back today. So keep it real with me. And hey, and invest to a million. That's my motto. Invest to a million. Keep it real. I'll be back.